Hello, my name is Courtney and welcome back to my channel where we go through education research one study at a time so that you can incorporate it into your practice. The topic that we're going to discuss today is math anxiety and the study that I'm looking at is called Math Anxiety, What Have We Learned in 60 Years? This study is basically a study of studies, if you will. Um, the researchers have gone through all of the research about math anxiety and compiled it into one area. The reason why researchers would do this is so that they can identify where there's gaps in the literature, where researchers need to be focusing on a little bit more, what the conclusive evidence is. So, okay, these five studies have been done here. Here's the takeaways from all of that. And so that we can see where there's enough research and we need to focus on other areas. So to begin, the author defines what math anxiety is. So the definition of math anxiety is mathematics anxiety can be defined as a feeling of tension and anxiety that interferes with the manipulation of numbers and solving of mathematical problems in ordinary life and academic situations. So there's two areas that the authors talk about that need to be explored when you're talking about math anxiety, the cognitive area and the affective area. So cognitive is worrying about uh, failure of performing. So worrying about not doing well on a math task. And then the affective area of it are the feelings of being nervous in a testing situation. So part of it is not doing well on worrying about not doing well on a math task. And the other part is worrying about not doing well in a test in general. So why do we need to care about math anxiety? Well, the authors note that there's been a lot of research that shows that students who have math anxiety have poor outcomes in math tasks. And so if we want our students to do better and they're experiencing anxiety, we can start to look at the anxiety um, and figure out a way to treat that in hopes that it will up a student's math scores and math abilities. The research about math anxiety is largely contradictory and a lot of that has to do with the way that it gets studied. So one study might have looked at children while another study looked at adults. One study studied students in the classroom, another study used a laboratory. One study used a questionnaire, another study used observations. And so the research is quite contradictory as we'll see, but there are still some takeaways that I think will be really beneficial to you. So the first thing that you need to know is that math anxiety is related to math self-concept and each of these influences the other. So if you have high math anxiety, you're likely to have a poor self-concept of your math abilities. But if you have a poor self-concept of your math abilities, you're more likely to experience math anxiety. So it can become a vicious cycle here. And researchers don't know which causes one or the other and which direction it goes into. So more research needs to be done in that regard. Another important thing that the authors noted was that in studying how people feel about math and attitudes towards math, um, people didn't describe their feelings about math in terms of the different components that exist in math. So math is not just arithmetic, it's not just geometry, it's not just magnitude or spatial sense. There, there's a whole bunch of different domains that make up math and you could be great in one and not in the other. But when people talk about their attitudes towards math, they spoke in generalities about math as a whole. So that is um, important for researchers who are studying math anxiety because they may need to reframe what math is and what it constitutes before they even get into these studies. Another important thing that the researchers noted is that people who have math anxiety are more likely to stay away from math activities because they feel nervous about doing the math. And the more you stay away from an activity, the less uh, exposure you get to it and the less practice you're going to get at math, meaning that less practice you're not going to do as well. So it becomes a vicious cycle there as well because people actively avoid the thing that they need to engage with in order to get better at it. And then another reason why researchers think that math anxiety might be related to poorer test scores is that when people are feeling anxious, their working memory becomes overloaded. So their brain space is being devoted to their anxiety that they can't focus on math. And math requires a lot of working memory to solve problems. And so their brains are just overloaded with the anxiety that they can't focus at the task at hand. There's also some evidence that negative experiences with math can lead to more math anxiety. So for example, repeatedly failing at math or um, getting low test scores can be related to an increase in math anxiety. The authors also suggest that there are individuals who are considered to be high math anxious students 
and they have a deficit in terms of their understanding of numerical magnitude. So understanding the magnitude of numbers. And they think that this deficit precedes the anxiety. So there's already a bit of a learning disadvantage for these people, which contributes to getting poor scores in math, which contributes to, to feeling more math anxiety. So in other words, math anxiety might be related to early misunderstandings about numerical magnitude, and this can compromise the development of being able to do higher level math problems. Sorry, kindergarten teachers. In one study, researchers noted that using an fMRI machine, people who were uh, considered to be high math anxious didn't necessarily lack math skill, but they lacked the ability to process the math questions efficiently. And so they think again that that has to do with working memory being overloaded. And then in a study of seven to nine year olds, um, using an fMRI machine again, they found that these kids were developing the same markers of anxiety that adults have. Sorry, grade two teachers but that this anxiety stemmed from the lead up to the math question, not the actual math task that they were going to be doing. So therefore, if we're going to treat math anxiety, it needs to start before the actual math questions happen because it's almost the, they're psyching themselves up that this isn't gonna go well before they've even seen what the math problem is. And then we get to gender. The authors note that gender and math anxiety have been studied a ton um, and there's so much contradictory information but what they did find is that when you control for gender and you control for um, students being given an equal opportunity in education and equal support with their education that the differences between males and females in a biological sense aren't there so there's they couldn't find a compelling reason why females should have more math anxiety than males. There is, however, differences in gender in terms of how anxiety is reported. And so females tend to report having more math anxiety than males. However, it should be noted that males rate themselves higher in all areas of education, regardless of it being math or, or any other subject. And females are more likely to rate themselves as feeling anxious compared to males. So the authors don't know how um, accurate the gender gap in math anxiety truly is. The authors also looked at age as a variable for math anxiety and they noticed that the more that a student progresses through school, the more likely they are to become math anxious. And particularly this peaks around age 13. Sorry, grade eight teachers. And so they're not sure if this is because general anxiety also tends to onset at around age 13, or if it's specific to math anxiety. Then the authors looked at studies that looked at math anxiety on a, a national and cultural basis, and they didn't find anything compelling there. So for example, Asian countries that report high math scores had high math anxiety, whereas uh, high-performing Western countries in Europe did not report the same high amounts of math anxiety. So this could be partly because of the way that uh, different countries frame mathematics and put pressure on students overall. Um, it could also be due to cultural differences in how people feel compelled to report feeling anxious. So that's a lot of information and in one sense, it's helpful that we can kind of understand what math anxiety entails, but on the other hand, it's not super helpful in terms of what can we actually do about it as teachers. The researchers went through and talked about ways that we can support students who do have math anxiety, and they're really interesting, so stick around for this. The first thing that the authors talk about in terms of getting students to shed a bit of their anxiety is to reappraise math tasks. So, and to do this in the buildup. So before a math test or a math task or any kind of math activity is being presented to students, if they're the types of students who feel anxious, have them acknowledge what they're feeling and the physiological things that come along with that. So feeling nervous, feeling sweaty, feeling um, butterflies in your stomach and acknowledging that those are there, but that's there to help your body be awake and be attuned to what's gonna happen next. 
So rather than saying that this is going to inhibit, it's more that this is going to wake you up and help you solve the task. And that can help students calm down and be able to actually devote their working memory to solving a math task. Another really interesting study that the authors talk about had students engage in expressive writing uh, for test anxiety. So they had students spend 10 minutes before a math exam writing out about their anxiety. And what they found was that for students who were highly math anxious, this 10 minutes of expressive writing did the trick and their math scores went up. Uh, for students who didn't experience math anxiety, there was no change. Their scores didn't go up or down. They just didn't really need to be engaging in expressive writing because they had nothing, their working memory wasn't overloaded. But for the students whose brains were busy worrying about the math, it kind of got it out for them. It let it all out on the paper and then they could focus on the task. This study was done in a laboratory setting, not in a classroom, but the findings are really encouraging. And it would be interesting to try this with any kind of test or project where people are getting overwhelmed at the thought is just to have them write it all out. That's assuming, of course, that they're old enough to write and that they also don't have writing anxiety. And then finally, the researchers note that um, there was a study where students who had math anxiety engaged in one-on-one -on -one intensive tutoring for a period of time. And this helped them because they were confronted with the very thing that they were getting anxious about over and over and over. And at the same time, they were also building fluency in math because they were getting tutored. So it's a bit of that whole facing your fears and also getting the practice that you need. So that was really useful for a group of students as well. And then finally, the last area that the author talks about and actually devotes quite a bit of attention to is called uh, transcranial electrical stimulation, which sends small electrical currents through the brain and can help with anxiety there. I'm not gonna go into the details of that or if how it works. Um, the author talked about it being a promising method. However, as teachers, we will never be given permission to hook up electrodes to anybody's brain or to send currents through their body. So we're gonna leave that one aside and focus on what you can do as educators, which is have them write out their worries, have them engage in tutoring, and have them re-ascribe re what their feelings are before they are engaging in a math task. The author concludes this study by saying that there's still a lot that really does need to be looked at in terms of math anxiety, and one of the big areas that needs to be explored is the role of teachers. So we know that we will probably play some kind of a role in students' math anxiety, and I hope that with the information I've given you today, that that role can be a positive role. For now, we can take what research exists and do our best to support students so that math anxiety doesn't impede their performance. Well, that is all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have a colleague that is also interested in teaching math, or is trying to support students who have math anxiety, please consider sharing this video with them. As always, I would love if you would leave a comment below about another education-related topic that I could summarize for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so that I can make more videos for you. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Bye.